Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, nice to be here with you again. This is Pastor Gordon, and today we'll be studying Second Peter chapter one. Uh, we'll finish up chapter one of Second Peter. So uh, I'll read from verse twelve to the end of the chapter. Let's pray first. Our beloved Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful time. We can worship you together. We pray for your presence, O、oh、Lord. May your Holy Spirit minister to us, cleanse us, forgive of our sins, and draw us close to you. Lord, it is by your grace, full faith, we are saved, not by good work. We praise you for that wonderful salvation that Jesus gave us. However, you challenge us through Peter、uh, that we are to add on faith and goodness. And、um, knowledge, and all this eight virtue of Christian、uh, fruit, fruit when God, when God's、uh, living in us, to to share His holiness and His godliness. Oh God, thank you for your、uh, word words because your word is lamp unto our feet and light unto our path, and today. Peter reminds us about the origin of Scripture and how the Bible was, was written. I pray that you remind us and confirm our, our、uh, establish our faith in in you and in the Scripture, because we know your word is alive and your love, your word is from you, not from men. So bless us as we open the word and pray for your、um, presence and work. Uh, among all your Christian、uh, brother and sister, and if there's anyone who doesn't know you yet, God also pray that the word of God also speak to them. I pray in Jesus' name, Amen. Hello,、uh, it's、uh, in Second Peter again.、Uh, today is in chapter one, verse twelve、uh, to twenty-one. Let me read it. Second Peter one twelve. So I will always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. Verse thirteen. I think it's right to refresh your memory as long as long as I live in the tent of this body, because I know that I will soon put it aside, as our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. Verse fifteen. And I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will always be able to remember these things. Verse sixteen: We did not follow cleverly invented story or myths,、uh, where when we told you about the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of His Majesty. Verse seventeen. For re for he received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory, saying, "This is my son, whom I love; with him I am well pleased." Verse eighteen: We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. Verse nineteen. And I and we have the word of the prophets made more certain, and you will do well to pay attention to it, as to a light shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning stars,、uh, sorry, is single, and the morning star rises in your hearts. Verse twenty. Above all, we must understand that no prophecy of Scripture. Came about by the prophet's own interpretation, verse twenty-one. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but man spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, it's a passage uh, full of teaching, uh, personal uh, sharing of about Peter. He was convinced that the time of his Departure from this world was approaching, and that's why he wrote this letter to the Christian there, 
to remind. Verse 12 to 15, uh, uh, sharing about, he wanted to remind them to establish their faith in Christ, to help them to remember all this teaching from Christ and from the apostles and from the Old Testament prophets after Peter would leave this body and go back to see the Lord. And then the second uh, section will be talking about his uh, personal experience on the trans in the transfiguration when Jesus took the disciples, a few disciples up to the mountain um, and revealed himself as God the Son. Uh, he's transfigured. He's become bright as the sun. His clothing was the whitest uh, white you can uh, see. Uh, and Moses and uh, Elijah was, were there. Uh, he, that was recorded in uh, Matthew. Uh, uh, in, I'll, I'll go to, to that later. Recorded in the, in, in the Gospels. And uh, then he said, I was there. I was the, I, I'm the eyewitness when Jesus transfigured. Uh, the voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son, to whom I'm well pleased. Um, said I was there. I didn't hear about it. I didn't. Uh, I mean, I was there with with, with John and James uh, to witness. I witnessed Jesus deity, and I didn't talk about near the end. Uh, of this section talk about the inspiration the authority and the reliability of scripture how scripture was re were written how prophecy was written the origin is not from man is not that by human wisdom by uh, the uh, i mean there is not the author was sharing about the opinion it was uh, carried along inspired by the holy spirit to write down what god wants them to write with uh, without, I mean, without uh, suppressing the the person's language and vocabulary, God used the writer's uh, background, uh, literature style, wording, but the Holy Spirit inspired the person, helped them to write down the scripture, the, the word of God. So that's that's trustworthy, and that is not a man-made thing. Okay, so basically that's the outline of this uh, section. Let's tackle the first section uh, about Peter was sharing about his departure soon. Uh, when you have limited time on earth, you probably will achieve what's the most important and what's the mo most uh, the thing you most wanted to do. Uh, if if God give you a a, a, num a date uh, that you will die, you will leave this world, what would you do? Um, someone would say would say ask will ask what have I been doing? What have I been doing? Uh, if with some if you have been doing things that are not uh, really satisfying to you or is not significant or meaningful to you. You better grab that last opportunity to achieve what is uh, meaningful to you and as Christian, more meaningful to God. And also, you may ask, uh, am, have I been doing things that's relevant or important to me or to people around me? And anyway, Peter here said, I will always remind you. He, he wrote to remind this brother and sister of this thing, that's, that's like in the earlier section, last sermon, we were talking about how to uh, live out this Christian life by growing up in Christ, uh, adding the, the, to faith at uh, uh, goodness, um, virtues uh, as, as a Christian. As God's Holy Spirit lives in us, we should bear fruits that reflect the godliness of our Savior, uh, not just uh, being stagnant. So he said, 
my brother be old uh, sorry uh, I remind I always remind you of these things that means the, to grow in Christ to be to live a godly life to wait for his coming uh, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth now you now have so these are not uh, immature Christian these are not uh, new believers I would say uh, they already know about these things and uh, Peter actually said they are firmly established in the truth you now have them I mean they are not shaky Christian they are not uh, easily deceived however Peter still wanted to remind them uh, because of our human nature we always uh, forgetful we always are uh, being dis- distracted sometimes deceived sometimes sometime, uh, uh, we are our focus with God's truth we are being carried away by our own flesh and maybe some false teaching uh, that he would address in chapter 2 there, uh, there were false teachings that deceived many so Peter using his last opportunity to write to them to be on guard on this about this uh, false teachings around them uh, telling them in Jesus Christ is sufficient for the faith for the salvation you don't need to add anything then there, there are no other mysterious teaching out there that will help them to become a strong believer in Christ only Christ Jesus is sufficient and the scripture is their uh, source of uh, faith of, of their trust how they can know God is through the Old Testament scripture and eventually the New Testament scripture they were um, they already uh, cert- Paul's letter already circulate around the early church so uh, in chapter 3 he mentioned about Pete Paul's writing to Peter okay so he wanted to remind them because he uh even they are firmly established in the truth but Peter knew his time on earth was limited and he was doing his best to try to build up their faith um, verse 13 I think it's right to refresh your memory see we we always need to be ref- uh, our, uh, our, I mean we need to be reminded and be, be to be refreshed uh, of our uh, of sometimes what we read before, what we le- heard before, uh, so going to meetings are important, attending worships are important, because the sermon is a is an opportunity to teach, to refresh your memory, and uh, to f- establish your faith. Uh, that's why preaching is a ministry. Uh, uh, teaching uh, and pastoral ministry uh, a spiritual gift I think it's right to refresh your memory as long as I live in this tent in the tent of this body because I know I will soon put it aside as our Lord Jesus has made clear to me so that's uh, I would say the, what we have uh, Paul Peter's the last letter that he wrote uh, that we re- that we can have including the scripture and he said, uh, I wanted to refresh your memory and establish you in the faith. As long as I still live in this tent, he called this body a tent. Uh, as as uh, Paul also used the word tent to describe this uh, temporary physical body that one day we will uh, leave this body, our spirit will go to God if you're a Christian and to be with God. Um, until the resurrection, God gave us a new body, a heavenly body. Uh, so he called it a tent. A tent is a temporal, like a uh, like, tent versus a building, a home, a, a, a permanent home, a home permanent address. A tent is like, it's like tabernacle, right? Uh, the Israelites move around in the desert, so they have to uh, uh, erect a tent, and then when they move on, the God let them to move on, they have to take it apart and move on uh, so a sense of temporary a, a, a sense of uh, not permanent so he, he looked at this body as a tent as a temporal dwelling of our spirit uh, he know uh, right now he's living in the tent but he know God told him I will soon put it aside 
put it aside like the language of taking off a cloth. Uh, it's, it's like it's like a departure. It's it's like uh, go to another stage. Go to another uh, uh, just like uh, leave uh, go aboard. Uh, go like you go to a uh, go aboard a plane. You you you're departing. You're going to another place. So he said he is uh, going to leave. He's uh, not going to drown in this physical body forever. Jesus has already told him he will soon put it aside as the Lord has made clear to him. So that's um, something we need to think about. One day, uh, you and me, we will leave this tent and uh, as Peter as Paul, as anyone, even we are godly people. Uh, that's the way God designed. Well, before He's come back, Jesus come back, we will leave this world, leave this physical body. We die physically, but not spiritually. Spiritual, spiritual. I mean, our spirit will be received by God. I think uh, when we are apart from the body, we will be present with the Lord. Um, that's the uh, Second Corinthians five. You can go there and, and read about how Christian look at death, and uh, when we die, Paul said we will be present with the Lord when we are born again Christian. Um, so, so that's kind of an urgency, a sense of urgency for P- for Peter here to to tell the reader that I'm leaving. And so that's why I wanted to remind you guys and establish you guys to be faithful, to live a godly life, to walk with the Lord. Um, Because one day I'll be gone. I cannot communicate to you um, like right now. That's why I wrote this letter so that you can read it. And after I depart, you can still read it and be reminded and to be established. Um, Peter Sly, when you read in the scripture, he was a fisherman. His life was changed when Jesus encountered him and called him to be Jesus' follower. And he laid down his uh, career, his ship, and his nets uh, and followed Christ to be fishers, fisher of men collect soul in the God's kingdom. And he had been faithful. Uh, he was a church leader. Even he fell, God, by denying Christ three times when in danger. However, Jesus has reestablished his faith. Uh, Jesus even said, I pray for you. Uh, so when you come back to be reestablished, you can comfort your brothers, help your brothers and sisters. And this kind of person, Peter, he had a lot of experience in the Lord. And he had an intimate friendship with Christ Jesus. Uh, he boasts about his protection of Christ. So that when people harm you, I will kill them. Um, he chopped off the ear of the servant when they arrest Jesus. However, Jesus stopped at him. But when the real danger uh, uh, hit him, he was scared. He wanted to protect himself. He said, I don't know Jesus. I don't know this guy. Uh, he was following Jesus' uh, trial outside, uh, watching. But he was uh, recognized by the surf- other servants there. Uh, but he had to swear to save his life at that moment. Um, when he denied Jesus three times, the rooster crow, uh, crowed, and, uh, and uh, the Bible said Peter wept. Before Peter wept, Jesus was looking into his eyes. Jesus looked at Peter after he denied him three times. As he reminded him, he foretold his denials. And Peter knew this is someone who is not a human being, not just a prophet, a good teacher. He's, he's a son of God. 
Anyway, that's Peter, and Peter is leaving. Wow, what a great leader, and、uh, what experience he had in the faith. However, he had to leave one day,、um, but he decided to pass on this faith and teaching to the next generation of believers. So he used all his energy and every ounce of his energy to continue to build them up and help them to grow. That says something, you and me. As an example, what have you been doing for Christ Jesus? Have you been helping, building any believers around you, or are you allowing God to build you, build your faith up, instead of、uh, using all the time on earth while you're in the tent, doing things that's insignificant to God and irrelevant to God's kingdom, and has nothing to do with Jesus Christ? If that's the case,、uh, one day we will go back to see God, and、um, we have to give an account to what we have done. So that's Peter's life, and、uh, that's the last、uh, stage of his life. And so I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will always be able to remember these things. It's the same word that it used earlier to encourage them to、uh, build up the. Uh, uh, virtues, verse five, Second Peter one five. For this very reason, make every effort to add your to your faith, goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, to knowledge, self control, self control, persevering, persevering, godliness, godliness, brotherly love, kindness, and brotherly kindness, love. He said, make every effort, use all your energy to to achieve this. And he used the same word here. I will make every effort, use all my energy to see that when, after after my departure, you folks will still be able to remember what I taught you, what Jesus has asked him to teach them. That's important. We all need be to be reminded.、Um, I used to write down down notes.、Uh, Uh, especially go to like retreats.、Uh, I had a notebook to write down things that God touched my life, and、uh, oh, once in a while, I took the I, I take those things out and read it. And、uh, recently, I just listened to some cassette recording of、uh, the first summer retreat I went to as a Christian. It was nineteen seventy nine. August.、Um, that pastor, God used him to basically turn my life around,、um, establish my understanding of who Jesus is, and very kind of like coincident, nineteen nineteen eighty nine. I think it's either August or July. The same pastor came to preach to to a summer retreat of my church. Same pastor, and he used the same sermon in the last meeting. Talk about John twenty one. Jesus asked Peter, "Do you love me more than this?" And he preached that sermon in nineteen eighty nineteen sorry nineteen seventy nine August.、Uh, I, I I listened to that recording. Uh, he was preaching that sermon,、uh, and by God's grace,、uh, I went to seminary after that retreat、um, in nineteen eighty nine. I felt God. I already applied for seminary, but after that retreat, I felt God confirm His calling to me to serve Him full time. Uh, I, we all need to be reminded. Sometimes, when you look for God's evidence and what He wants you to understand, you find it so scaringly. He will show up and show you what He wants you to do.、Um, things like that, we can be sure God is working powerfully in. 
among his children. If we seek to serve him, know him, and love him. Okay, let's move on. Peter was eyewitnesses, one of the eyewitnesses in the transfiguration. Uh, uh, you must have uh, read this before, Matthew uh, 17. Matthew 17. Uh, uh, Peter took with him, I mean, sorry, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John. Uh, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. He was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes become as white as a light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. When he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love, with whom, with him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground. He was terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, and he said, Don't be afraid. When he looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. Matthew 17, 1, 2, 8. Peter was there. Peter saw and heard and experienced Jesus transfiguring. He, he showed himself as God. Even supernatural things happened. Moses appeared. Elijah was there. And God the Father said, World, uh, audibly to them, this is my beloved son. This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> if you were there, <laughs> I would be freaking out and, and don't know what to say. And just, bow, just worship and bow down and, and frighten. Uh, that's what Peter did. Jesus was, Peter was eyewitness, one of the eyewitnesses. So he convicted, he's convicted what this guy is. He's not a teacher. He's not a good, good guy. He is supernatural. He's from above, from heaven. He is a God, God, uh, God sent. Uh, well, he is the Messiah. Peter said, you are the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah. He experienced God's revelation to him. Peter know Jesus because God spoke to them, revealed himself to them, to him. That's why he's convinced. He says, I'm dying, but I tell you, you guys better shape up or grow and be a strong Christian. I'm going to see my Lord. And you guys are stay here, keep fighting, keep keep doing the right thing. Verse 16. We do not follow carefully careful invented stories. The word in Greek is a myth, mythos. It's a, like a make up people, make up fake story to, to, to deceive people. But Peter said, we did not follow this carefully invented myths, but we told you about the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were, we, I mean John and James, uh, we were eyewitnesses. I saw it. Of his majesty, Jesus' majesty, we were sent in. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majest majestic glory. That means the transfiguration, Matthew 17. Saying, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. That means with his approval, the Father's approval. This is the one I sent to the world to die for their sin and to redeem them. I approve him. Listen to him. Don't just treat him like a nobody. You have to choose whether you accept the Lord Jesus Christ or rejected him. And one day you'll be judged accordingly. Listen to him, Heavenly Father said. Verse 18. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven and when we were with him on the sacred mountain. So once again, Peter 
is bearing witnesses, personal ex- testimony about the experience he had with Christ Jesus in this mountain. Um, so what, what, the, what, what does it mean? That means I'm not lying. What I told you was from my own, I saw it with my own eyes, I heard it from my own ears. I, I'm telling you, Jesus is the Lord, is the Savior, is the Messiah. Trust Him. And also the Old Testament also testify about Him. Trust Him. Don't be deceived by a false teacher in chapter 2. Verse 19, we have the word of the prophets made more certain, and we just will do well, and you will do well to pay attention to it, as to a light shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. Is that not just by trusting what I said, my personal testimony to you, but also look at the Old Testament prophets. They, all, they also... Uh, testify about this Messiah, Jesus Christ, that that's a, with two witnesses. You better trust that this is the Christ. Uh, make more certain, that means this, to make the evidence more clear. Uh, th- that's the teaching. You will do well if you pay attention to it. So keep on reading the scripture. Keep on listening to um, the Bible and then you will not be deceived and you will not be uh, blinded spiritually. Uh, don't just read the news. Don't just uh, look at things that man said, human said. Look at what God said when the world is ever changing today. When the pandemic is so scary. Don't just look at the news. Look at God's revelation. Look at God's inspiration, word of God to be comforted, to be uh, established and also to have hope and to have assurance of where we're going when we die, and when we one day leave this world, grab God's word, take it in, and you will be established. You will be, you will stand firm. You will not be shaken. You will not stumble. You do well if you pay attention to the word of God and Peter's testimony here. Uh, this is like a light shining in a dark place. This world is totally spiritually dark. It's the word of God and God's revelation is like a light shining in a dark place. Have you ever entered into your garage with the light turned off and then you're finding your way to, to the, the entrance, to the door? Uh, back then we didn't have cell phone. I, I have I many experience like that. And I stay in the car and then the, the garage opener, I mean the garage doors light turn off automatically. And I try so hard to find a door and stumble. We didn't have cell phone that has light and that kind of stuff. When it's dark, uh, you need light. Otherwise, you just don't know where. You don't know where you're going. The Bible is the light. The Bible, the Word of God is the light unto my path, the next step. And the, it's a lamp unto my path, light, a uh, lamp unto my path, <laughs> light unto my... Uh, uh, I, yeah, I can't, I can't feel it. Anyway... It's a thy word is a lamb unto my feet, it's my feet. Right, I have to walk the next step. If you in, in the edge of the hill, next step will be the step of death. So every step is important. Light unto my path, the longer direction. Uh, where's my path? Where do you want? Where does God want me to do it down the road in my life? Five years from now, two years from now, where? Read the Word of God. It will help you to know. He's a light lamb unto my feet, and next step, and then light unto my path. And he said, he is the light shining in the dark place, the, the Word of God. Until the day dawn, when Jesus comes back, and the morning star rises in your uh, heart, there's really likely talking about the return of Jesus when he judged the world. Uh, we hold on to our faith until uh, Jesus comes back. The day when the... Darkness uh, will be uh, overcome by the day, by the light, by the sun uh, rising. And the morning star rises in your heart. I mean, there's a language like giving us hope, giving us assurance that it will be day. It's not all the time darkness. Verse 20. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but man spoke spoke from God as they were carried along, inspired by the Holy Spirit. 
And the last part, he talked about the authority of the Bible, the reliability of the Bible, uh, how the how scriptures inspired, and how we get our Bible, our scriptures. Scriptures are prophecy from God, it's revelation from God. God reveal Himself, communicate Himself with human being、uh, through the agent of the writer, a prophet or the New Testament writer. God inspire, prompt them,、uh, help them to write down what He want us to know.、Uh, carry along by the Holy Spirit, the last word said. But man spoke from God, so they inspire, prompt by God, as they will carry along by the Holy Spirit, under control of the Holy Spirit, helping of the Holy Spirit, prompting of the Holy Spirit. They wrote down. What God want them to write, but without overriding their background, their education, and their vocabulary,、uh, Peter wrote differently from Paul. Paul wrote differently from Luke, and you can distinguish the the writers'、uh, vocabulary and language.、Uh, you can tell they are different writers. John used、uh, the word logos many times, and.、Uh, Peter used the word faith many times, righteousness many times.、Uh, so, so very distinguishable、uh, style.、Uh, God still using a writer, his background, but inspired, controlled, led by the Holy Spirit to write down his word. So, no scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. That means it's not generated or.、Uh, Recorded according to what he thinks, it's a, it's not man oriented. This is not man、uh, generated. Scriptures are not the prophet's own product, but it's a co-work, co-working of the Holy Spirit, God Himself, and the writers and the prophets. They're working with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, help the writer to write down the Word of God. For the prophecy never had its origin in the will of man. Doesn't mean doesn't mean that I I one day wake up and say, oh God,、uh, I think I should write down and, and I put down uh, Jesus uh, as I, Jesus told me. But actually,、uh, I just、uh, this is my own opinion or, or my own thinking. No, the Bible, Peter said, no prophecy was like that. No one just this is not just the will of man. It's not the humans. Wisdom or opinion, but it's a co collab collaborating of man and God. Man spoke from God, spoke from God as they carry along, carry along by the Holy Spirit. So that's、uh, how we、uh, get our doctrine of、uh, inspiration, and how we understand God、uh, helped the writer to write the Bible. So it's a co. Clabering of the Holy Spirit and the person.、Um, Second Samuel twenty three、um, two, Old Testament also taught about this. David David said, "The Spirit of the Lord spoke through me; His word was on my tongue."、Uh, God was prompting David to write down what he want, what God wanted him to write. But Jeremiah said, "You must say whatever I command you." Now I have put my words in your mouth. Jeremiah one seven and nine.、Uh, there are times there were verbatim that God spoke and the writer wrote it down verbatim.、Uh, but there are times, just like the New Testament、uh, letters, a lot of times. God inspired and carry the the Holy Spirit carry the person, prompt them to write down what God put the message in their heart. So so、uh, that's uh, something uh, we got. We just touch on this the big topic. At least you know the, the scripture not originated by man is not、uh, Peter's opinion or Paul's opinion is inspired by God to write down. It's a miraculous. Uh, uh, it's a miraculous thing. It's not just a, 
uh, a man's uh, uh, doing without God's uh, participation. It's a combination of God and using the writers to, uh, to write down. Okay, so the, also there are a few verses we can read about uh, the inspiration of the scripture. For example, uh, the very famous uh, 2, Peter, 2 Timothy 3.16 all scripture is God breathed, like God breathed his spirit. God communicate to the writer and to us. And all scripture is God breathed, inspired, and is useful for teaching, <coughs> rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So the scripture is not just for intellectual or uh, you know, it is not just an intellectual thing. It's just uh, analyze it and you walk away. No, it's rebuking. You need to change. You need to be corrected. Correction, training, and righteousness. We are wicked. We're, when we read the Bible, we'll be, if we allow the Bible to speak to us, we'll be more godly. We'll be more Christ-like. That's the end result, the goal of reading the Bible. It's not just to, uh, oh, I feel better now. Uh, I mean, it's not for your own... Uh, it's not a novel. It's not a fiction. It is the word of God. It's God breathed, useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training. And First uh, Corinthians fourteen, uh, thirty six. Did the word of God originate with you, or are you the only person people it has reached? If anyone think he is a prophet or spiritually gifted, let him acknowledge that what I that's Paul. What I am writing to you is the Lord's command. If he ignores this, his teaching, he himself will be ignored. Paul trying to defend his position as an apostle and also a writer of the scripture. His writing, he said here literally, I'm writing to you is the Lord's command. It's directly from Christ. You better listen to it. If you ignore this teaching, God will ignore you. Basically, that's what he said here. And uh, and also the last one is Second uh, Peter three fifteen. He's uh, Peter quoted, I mean, uh, refer a uh, reference to Peter Paul. I mean, for to Paul and his writing, uh, he said, "Verse Second uh, uh, Peter three fifteen. Just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom." That God gave him, see, is a co collaboration of uh, God and the person. God writes the same, sorry, he writes the same way in his, all his letter. Speaking in them of these matters, his letter contains something that's hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort, the twist the meaning. So they, as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. Ooh, ooh. So Peter considered Paul's writing a scripture, Bible. Uh, so anyone distort Paul's writing, the meaning, they will lead to their own destruction. So today, Peter reminds us to be stand firm in Christ, to live a godly life, as the last sermon talked about, a faith add on goodness, all this. And uh, Peter remind them, I am an eyewitness of Jesus. He called me to be a disciple. I lived with him three years. I saw him there on the cross. Uh, I denied him three times. I met with him when he resurrected. He gave me fish to eat and called me to be uh, a past to pastor his his uh, sheep. And uh, I have been the leader of the church. And uh, now I'm going to leave, go to see my Lord. I want, I tell, I use all my energy now to write all this down to remind you. So one day when I left, you can read my word and be reminded about who Jesus is. That's what he's trying to do. He was eyewitnesses of his Lord, everything about him, especially here the transfiguration. He definitely was there when he resurrected. He showed, Jesus showed to them. Also, he 
reminds us the Old Testament and the New Testament are inspiration of God. It has authority and is reliable. You can trust trust the Bible to receive life, eternal life and abundant life, and to know God and to be saved. That's the source of our faith. So keep on trusting God and His Word. And beware of false teachers that we're going to talk about next time. And believe, believe, don't be deceived. And uh, we live in a dark time, but the Word of God is the light shining in a dark place. Until the day dawn, Jesus returns. And the morning star, Jesus himself, rises in our heart. Let's pray. Our Lord, we thank you for you, for your grace to all us humans. Uh, you, historically, you call a few people uh, to be your eyewitnesses, to be your testimonies, to tell everyone that who you are. Oh Lord Jesus, you were here on earth 2,000 some years ago, and your impact still experiencing, we are still experiencing your impact in 2021. Oh God, by Peter's testimony, by Paul's writing, and by the church's testimonies, and by our brother and sister's testimony and their faith in Christ, we can be reminded, be and we and we can be re, be established, be strong in the faith of Christ, Wolf, in Christ, and walking with you until we see you face to face in eternity. Oh God, help us not to be shaken, not be shot down by Satan and his schemes and his lies. Uh, protect your children. Help us to read your Bible. Pray to you all. Uh, that's how we can um, battle, fight this battle, spiritual battle on earth. So, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Next week uh, is Tim, Tim Learn, and uh, I'll see you next time.